at this point, we have the tools necessary to stop the spread of HIV. I feel empowered. I feel like the Dimitri Post diagnosis loves every inch of himself. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Hello there, welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we're all about turning positive into a plus. We are celebrating 40 years of AIDS Walk LA, and here to tell us more about the AIDS Walk, Craig from APLA Health. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you as well. 40 years, and and it's kind of historic, right? It's back. Yeah, and uh, so this was uh, the first AIDS Walk in the world. Right. Uh, started here in, in Los Angeles 40 years ago. So every year you guys theme the AIDS Walk. This year's theme is we're not walking back. What does that represent and why did you guys choose that this year? Um, so it's we're not walking back and it's 40 years of progress. So what we're talking about is when we think about the circumstances in which this walk started mm -hmm. and where we are today, it's exponentially a different um, scenario for people with HIV, right? Yeah. Um, but at the same point in time, we have not reached the finish line, right? So I'd like to not be doing this walk at some point. Yeah. Right. And at this point, we have the tools necessary to stop the spread of HIV. Um, but now we've got to turn that into action and stop, you know, stop the spread of this virus. It's a powerful statement we're making. But it's, I also think AIDS Walk LA, whether it's in LA or the AIDS Walks that happen around the country for that matter and around the world, they really do make important statements, don't they? It's not just about raising money. It's about making a statement. Yeah, it's about making a statement and generating awareness, right? So this walk originally started because people were dying and really the government wasn't really doing much about it, right? And so this was to bring attention. And 40 years later, it still does bring a considerable amount of attention to what the disease state is today. You know, I think a lot of people, and myself included, have often gotten frustrated because HIV and AIDS falls out of the conversation a lot. You know, it's a blessing and a curse. We've got these great advances in, in science and medicine. You know, we can live healthy, long lives, get tested and get on treatment, become undetectable and transmittable. Um, but, you know, because of that, people think, no, we don't really need to keep talking about it then. What, you know, we, all the prep. In your mind, how has it changed over the, the last 40 years in that keeping it out there, keeping people talking about it? Um, look, I think, you know, obviously the, the medical advancements, particularly in the last 20 years, have been incredible. I mean, we can now use uh, this medication prophylactically to, you know, prevent you uh, from getting the disease. Um, so that's an amazing thing. But the reality is, for most people, they're not really aware of that, right? And we're also getting uh, to a point where most people have not actually seen what AIDS looks like, right? So the boogeyman is really hard if you don't really have a visual, you know, reminder or, you know what I mean, you're not of the era in which you lost a tremendous amount of, you know, friends and family, right? Um, so I think we have to use this as a device to maintain our vigilance, right? And still get that message out because most people um, who are receiving health care aren't really receiving culturally competent LGBTQ plus health care, right? And a lot of that conversations regarding sex, um, you know, uh, prep, things like that, you know, that has to be have really culturally competent care. So a lot of people are still coming, um, you know, young, younger people are coming of age and still not really understanding the, the repercussions of it. Yeah, and I think it, that goes back to we're not walking back, right, as well. You know, you, it's funny, you mentioned the boogeyman and yeah, it's horrific. And again, I go back to that sort of both sides of it. We don't, thank God, we don't have to see the boogeyman of what right. AIDS was at its worst. But in some ways you have to remind people, how does a walk like this, how do we you know, use it as a tool to unite and to galvanize and to encourage, do you think? Well, again, bringing people together, right? And all the media attention that comes around us being together, I think really has a great amplification effect. But this is just one piece of the, of, of the puzzle, right? You know, last year we released our Commitment to Life documentary, yeah. uh, which was corresponding to our organization's age of being 40. Um, and so really kind of telling that story, right? So even though you may not have lived in that era, right? 
we wanted to make sure that we not only showed what that looked like, but also preserving the stories of, of those people. And I think AIDS Walk allows us to take those stories and put them in a contemporary context, um, but also looking back and saying, we're, we're not forgetting the past, we're not forgetting why this walk started, and just making sure that we, um, you know, move, you know, keep progressing until until this disease is gone. Yeah, and it's something that having been a part of this now for a number of years, something that always strikes me rather emotionally on the day of the walk is the number of people, A, the number of people who show up, B, the number of young people um, who are not living with HIV, um, who, who just want to get out there and support, but also change people's minds when it comes to stigma. And I think that also is a big part of what this walk does in destigmatizing HIV, don't you think? Uh, absolutely. And, and let's also not forget that the, the root of the LGBTQ plus rights movement really started with HIV and AIDS, right? So all of the organizing, all of the community building uh, that arose out of this horrific disease is what allowed us to, you know, um, execute against marriage equality, right? And, and where we're back. So, you know, when we say we're not walking back, I mean, obviously there's a, there's an HIV AIDS sure. context to that, but there's also an LGBTQ plus rights uh, context to that, right? And, you know, there's a lot of states in which um, legislation is being created to kind of walk back some of those rights. And so, you know, we always want to use this as an activist um, mindset in, in, in saying like, hey, let's be vigilant about that. Let's speak out about that and let's bring as much attention as possible. Um, and making sure that, that we're not walking back. For people who don't know too much about it, where does the money that gets raised for AIDS Walk LA go? How is it utilized? Yeah, so uh, as we approach 40 years, we're also approaching um, most likely the $100 million um, milestone, so over 40 years. Um, but our organization has changed uh, tremendously, particularly in the last 10 years as we um, pivoted into healthcare. Uh, but to answer your question, Right now, that money goes to um, programs that we can't really receive the typical funding um, to support. Uh, so it's more of our experiential, uh, experimental stuff uh, that's out there in terms of reaching hard to reach communities, um, our black and Latinx folks, our transgender folks, and really doing original and amazing things to try and make sure that that we're, our message is being received in communities that are hardest to penetrate. Yeah, and I know that one of the programs, and we've featured it here on Plus Life, um, is Hive HIV Elders. And, and that's a phenomenal program in of itself because we know that, you know, by 2030, 75% of people living with HIV in the United States are going to be over the age of 50. Right. And I don't think, I think we can all agree that the systems are not there in place to, to properly take care of us. So that's just one of the many great programs that APLA Health um, runs. You also, if you're not living in the Los Angeles area, you can still be a part of AIDS Walk LA. You can still... Absolutely. You can go online to AIDSWalk.LA and donate. Uh, you can support teams or individual walkers. Um, and, you know, again, just even joining in, you know, if it's not monetary, it's about, uh, you know, spreading the word, right. right? And making sure that you're a part of this amplification effect that we're, we're trying to get there and, and people understand what the virus is today and what we need to do furthermore to eradicate it. What do you enjoy most about the day of AIDS Walk LA? Um, for me, it's just seeing, uh, like you just said, the multi-generational, you know, coming together um, in unity, um, you know, people uh, remembering loved ones that they've lost, um, people that have had no connection to that, still, you know, supporting community. Um, and so for me, it's just really the gathering community and again, amplifying our message and just making sure that people remain vigilant against the disease. Not to mention getting up at 4 a.m. To, to do television with me at 4.30 for, for, for ABC here in Los Angeles. Um, lastly, Greg, if people want to get involved, you mentioned the website there, but just give it another plug. How can people get involved if they want to sign up, if they want to donate, or if they just want to help spread the word? Yeah, just uh, join us at AIDSWalk.LA and all the options will be available to you right there on the homepage as to how you can uh, support this year's event. Well, congratulations on 40 years. Phenomenal stuff and nearly $100 million. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is going to do it for this Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we're all about turning positive into a plus. If you want more information, check out the website, pluslifemedia.com. And remember, you can like, follow, and share. We're on all your favorite social platforms at Plus Life Media. 
Until next time, be nice to one another and consider, you know, signing up for Aid to Walk LA. See ya.